uh, if you're a candidate for public office, please stand up. I think you should be recognized. So I know we have a few. We have Alexander Deputy up here. He's running for State Senate in District 67. We have Bob Zick running for State Senate in District 43. We have you know, State Senate candidates. In there. Uh, ben Schwanke, who's working, is uh, running for State Senate in District 42. Uh, do we have anybody else who's a candidate for public office here or is an office holder? Okay, so, you know, those three. Um, Thank you guys for being here. I know Alexander's probably going to go here, so if you go, just feel free to do what you need to do. Um, we are really, I think, blessed and fortunate to have uh, two exceptional people. One happens to be my boss. <laughs> so I guess he's the one I'm going to introduce to you first, and then what we'll do is we'll give Shia just a moment to speak, and then I'll introduce Jason, give him a moment to speak, and then we'll have a Q&A session. So first of all, Sheila Lowe, who's uh, the 4th Congressional District Republican endorsed candidate for Congress. Uh, he is a first generation Hmong American. He uh, arrived here in 1978 in, in St. Paul, lived in the McDonough Projects. Uh, I was actually over there last week with him and it was interesting to see him kind of relive you know, some of his childhood here in St. Paul. And then he went to North Park University? Yes. North Park University in Chicago, got a bachelor's degree in medical uh, technology, became a medical technologist for a short time, then went to Hamlin Law School. He's become a, an attorney. I know Jason, kill all the lawyers, that's what Shakespeare said. Um, and now you're sitting next to one. Shakespeare and the, and the Eagles. And the so, Eagles, that's right. <laughs> so uh, she got a degree in uh, medical technology, became a medical technologist for a while while he went to Hamlin Law School. He rolled, rose his way up the ranks, becoming the deputy city attorney for the city of St. Paul for a couple of years. Uh, he was the uh, special advisor, was it special advisor? Senior policy advisor. Senior policy advisor. Thank you. I knew I got that wrong. Senior policy advisor for me or Randy Kelly for a couple of years. Randy. And then uh, after that, he went into private practice and he is uh, still running a low law firm. And he, you know, is now uh, set off and he's giving back and this is his opportunity. <laughs> so here is my boss, Shia Lowe. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, uh, uh, thank you so, uh, so much for that great uh, introduction. But um, I just want to take this opportunity to um, thank the, Mr. Yang, who is the owner of Mong Village. Thank you for having us. And uh, I also want to take this opportunity to um, thank Jason Lewis for coming out here. We love you, Jason. And like I was tell telling Jason, uh, this is where democracy and freedom starts. Mm -hmm. It takes an incubator, an incubation like this to uh, raise 200 plus uh, mom and pop stores into hopefully the next uh, Walmart, the next Medtronic, and the next, uh, the next Target. That's what the Hmong wants, that's why they put this together. So I'm so happy that uh, Jason uh, would spend the time to come out here and actually tour it. Another reason why we're here is to find out how the store owners are doing. Um, and as we walk through the store, uh, it's only six o'clock and uh, there's no business out there. And so we want to get the message out to uh, the general public that Jason and myself are very concerned that our businesses are not out there ru running, right? We sh at this time, we should all be eating and contributing to our economy and yet uh, there is absolutely no business economic opportunity out there. That means that we're not gonna be able to be free, all right? We don't have, we're not earning the resources that we need so that we can definitely um, and can maintain our freedom. So I want to thank Jason for coming. <laughs> Next, I want to thank all the endorsed candidate of all of you. Uh, Jason and I, we're going to be working very closely with all of you to make sure that we bring business success back into Minnesota. And we're going to turn Minnesota red, red, and we can't do it alone. We're going to need all of you to do your part. We're going to do our part so that we can turn Minnesota red, which really means that we're going to bring freedom to Minnesota. So thank you. I also want to thank the, the, uh, the veterans that, that are here uh, this evening. Could you please stand? Our veterans, let's give them a let's get it together for our veterans. Without your contribution during the war, we wouldn't be where we are today.
today and that there will be no Hmong village um, in the U.S. if it wasn't for your sacrifice. And so thank you so very much. Uh, lastly, I want to thank all the uh, Hmong leaders that are here, but especially I want to thank the National Chairman uh, Tu Fong Law. organization represent all of the Hmong in the U.S. So whatever happens here, um, he can relate that to the Hmong community here in Minnesota and throughout the U.S. Um, my message um, to all of you, I want to thank the um, Hmong community um, and Hmong village for having the vision um, to create the, this uh, business incubator, incubator, I would call, right? Because you we fought very hard and we paid a very heavy price to come to America. But what does it mean if we come to America and we do not have the ability to be free, right? It means nothing that we, we are still um, in a desperate situation where we cannot provide for ourselves. And so we need to be free. And the way to be free is to start at a place just like this. And we have hundreds of mom and pop and young people that are learning about business, about how to become independent, how to contribute to, to America and to society, and how to become free. So with that, um, that's gonna be our mission. That's gonna be mission uh, for uh, Jason Lewis and all of our, our candidates, and I, I thank you, uh, all of you, for coming. I just wanna say a few words in Hmong, so people still know that I can still speak Hmong. <laughs> <laughs> right? uh, maybe my opponent, uh, you know, I, she no longer know how to speak Hmong. So I have to say a few words in Hmong because we're a Hmong village. Mm-hmm. อนุนอเปยจงเชียหังหัดเตียเจสันลูอิสนันซาปาวจอเปมงจอเกคือยอจอเกวันเทียนอนเจฮาวกับเปตอจอมีกาเตนะเปมอฟรีดอมลีวอ
and in English as well as Italian. Okay, so now our next guest. <laughs> um, if you have ever listened to AM 1500 on the radio many years ago, and then uh, starting in 2006, it was AM 1130. We have Minnesota's Mr. Wright, Jason Lewis. He, um, if I'm right, uh, Jason, you were born and raised in Minneapolis? No, mom was. I was in Iowa. You were in Iowa. I, I know you were an Iowa boy. I also I knew, you were, I also knew <laughs> you were a Minneapolis boy, so I want to make sure I, I knew which. But uh, I do know you ran for Congress back in 92 in Colorado. 90. 90. 90 in Colorado. And then came here to work on AM 1500, who I've heard many, many hours. And then went to North Carolina, came back. AM 1130, and then uh, ran for Congress uh, four years ago. 2016. 2016, won a term, and then narrowly lost two years ago. Now he's running for U.S. Senate against. <laughs> so, Jason Lewis, Minnesota, Mr. Thank you very much. I have to say that between that introduction, and your question <laughs> was the longest introduction. Uh, she, I have to say, um, you have in the fourth congressional district the absolute strongest candidate I can ever recall in this district to beat Betty McConnell. That's right. <laughs> Well, while she is representing all of the people in St. Paul, including your community, this valuable community and this wonderful place, Betty McCollum is representing the special interests and trying to close down business in Minnesota, even up on the Iron Range. Right. She's not serving her constituents. Shia will be your next representative, and he will serve your community. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge Mr. Yang. This is a wonderful, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, from a farmer's market to clothing stores to shops for kids to lawyers and jewelers, this is exactly what we call the American dream. And all of us are proud of this. <laughs> I would also like to acknowledge the chairman uh, and the wonderful community he represents and your attendance here today representing uh, among people everywhere. Thank you so much for coming to be but most of all, as a child of the Cold War, with two brothers much older than me, uh, in Vietnam, in Da Nang, and outside of Da Nang, I want to thank all of the veterans in this room and on that hallway for the service to the cause of freedom and liberty from Southeast Asia to America. Thank you. It is, it, it is truly hard to overestimate the contribution you gave. Um, in the years 68 and 69 alone, some 18,000 Hmong people perished fighting for freedom throughout the world and for the American cause. 
And by the end of the war at the Paris Peace Accords, when it was finally over, some 30 to 40,000 40, Hmong patriots fought and died so that we could hold off the, the surge of the communists in Southeast Asia. We did not lose, you did not lose, we eventually won the Cold War because of your efforts. <laughs> ที่ก็เป็นในจอมตัวจอมในจอมตัวชอบหาตัวซื้อเขาเกิดเกียร์ว่าชาวเชื้อเรื่องเขาอยู่ที่ชีตัวตรงนั้นนี่ตัวชอ
for, quite frankly, a Marxist cause. I'm, I, I've been known as sort of a blunt speaker. I tell, you know, say it like it is. And I'm going to tell you uh, how it really is. You have groups like Antifa and other groups who are Marxists, who don't believe in private property, who don't believe in life and liberty, don't believe in all the things you've sacrificed for. So I'm going to be blunt. You didn't spend so much of that blood and treasure you didn't fight so hard against communist tyranny and oppression only to come to America to see the authorities let those sorts of people run loose in the streets. That has to stop, and that has to stop now. ลายลูกจีเยียจีนี่ล่ะลายสายเตี้ยอีปอจายายอนอจีลีจีเจเปสเซลีลายจงตุติละตาลายจอตุติละตาลายอะลายตุติละตาลูกสายเตี้ยข
sáng chủ thọ hơn này là cho lại xin nào mà có những mùa này là chỉ mà mùa lại xin bảo cán ngọ chỉ chỉ chăng chăng qua chỉ tàu lại lại xin lao động thì chỉ tàu này bây giờ chủ cơ li hạt địa tạc xin là đập lòi đã rồi mua lại cho lại xin là kho bảo ta có lao động thì dùng gì thì dùng gì kho nào giờ ít kho bây giờ chủ ba cho tu lao động bây giờ xong mua lại lại xin nào chỉ là chủ là một tí thái chỉ cần cho tu lao động nó lo đi để cho chủ mua nó mà học kho nào giờ ít kho và bây giờ chủ ở tận đây nè Oh, and we're going to keep your taxes low. <laughs> now, if Betty McCollum and my opponent, Tina Smith, have their way, none of that happens. In fact, just the opposite. Um, they, and when they get Joe Biden out of the basement, the first thing they're going to do is raise your taxes, regulate your business, and make certain there isn't public order in the streets. We can't have that in 2020, so we have to get out there and vote. <laughs> chị lấy cho chị cho nên nó lấy vào lấy chị thì à ủa ít bỏ trái à bỏ chua thì đúng nó lấy cho chị chẳng họ nó biết chị tông cả let me close with one of my favorite quotes from Thomas Jefferson and I think it speaks to our current crisis with all of these executive orders coming from the governor's mansion with all the support for eternal lockdowns and all of the rules and regulations that uh, we must follow now, uh, and all of the wrong models they're based on, I might add. Mm -hmm. um, Jefferson was asked, not long before he died, whether he thought the written law was of highest obligation. <laughs> and he responded, and he said, the written law is of high obligation, but it is not the highest. The laws of self-preservation, the laws of necessity and the law of saving your country when in danger are of higher obligation. President do quốc mày chẳng chăng chạp là bọn ấy đã chỉ chẳng chăng chạp quốc mày nghe thì quốc mày nhưng không đâu là những chẳng chăng cơ kia thì bây giờ chủ quốc chẳng có lấy quốc mày tức là họ chẳng chăng chạp chạp quốc mày do họ dùa chủ chở dù tù khen họ dùa chủ chở dù tế chở dù cho xe ná họ nó lọt chạp anh ấy nó chạp quốc mày hủ xa thì họ nó cho ý khó quả bây giờ để dùa chủ do chống sợ Thank you for your service Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you, Mr. Yang, for this. This is fantastic. Thank you, Shia. And onward and upward to November with your next congressman and your next senator. Okay, we have some quick questions, but I'm gonna open it up with actually two questions. First one is, what in your life has prepared you for this moment? Jason, let's start with you. My <laughs> wife. <laughs> People ask me why I want to go back to the swamp, and I say after having been home the last few months, nobody wants me back in D.C. more than my wife. <laughs> uh, what's prepared me is the slow erosion of liberty that I've witnessed, quite frankly, in my adult life. You know, Thomas Jefferson also said um, that, that, that liberty naturally will yield and government will grow over time if we don't have eternal vigilance. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing this creeping socialism, creeping communism in some circles. They even say it now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's very, very troublesome. And I've seen that. I lived through the Cold War like so many of you. I know what that's like, even if our young people don't. We can never let that happen in America again. Um, for me, um, it's the escape of communism and uh, how we lost our freedom in Laos during the war, and how, how much the Hmong and my family and uh, friends uh, fought so hard uh, for freedom. 
and to have come to America and then to educate ourselves. I've done that. And then to work at all level of government so I, that I understand how government works and how the law works. And now I'm ready to take on this challenge to make sure that I know uh, how to find solution and to find a way to make sure that America maintain her freedom. Sure. Um, uh, we have the first question from uh, 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 Chairman Tufang. Chairman Tufang, welcome up. And sure. <clears throat> to just thank you, uh, Jason Lewis. The Hmong came well immigrate to America not as an immigrant but as refugees from war. Uh, for the 50 plus years we established here in the United States, as you've seen, we worked very hard to have a village of businesses throughout the United States. And it would suck in or, you know, with incident like the Black Lives Matters, some of the business got destroyed and our fortunes were wiped out. Uh, we have limited resources to start a business and um, you know things like this happened and now we're going to start back in square one. As a candidate running for U.S. Senate, what do you see and what do you think that the Hmong needs or what can you offer or find solutions so that we don't have the hurdle again that Hmong Americans are refugees who are embedded with the Americans, we're here to stay, we want to contribute, we want to make America great, and we need resources to the next level right. so that the Hmong community can move from poverty or from the backyard to entrepreneurs like McDonald, Walmart, and et cetera. That's what we want. We are contributor. We're not receiver, and we are hardworking people like fuck <laughs> Lastly, uh, you know, uh, I have you answer both. With the COVID-19, it has been hit hard. Uh, again, as you see tonight, uh, uh, you know, Mong Village uh, has been pretty much uh, wiped out. Uh, what is your response as far as making sure that this flu or this COVID-19 uh, be taken care of so that we came back to normal and be better from what it was before. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Let me tell you what's on the ballot in 2020. And she had just said it. Freedom. Simple as that. When the riots were taking place, when the chaos was in the streets going down University Avenue, starting in South Minneapolis to North Minneapolis where my grandparents grew up, uh, DuPont and Broadway, when I was a kid, I'd visit grandma and grandpa there. Now it's, it looks like bombed out London. Comes over to University Avenue, takes new fashion, takes many of your businesses. What was happening then was the absence of freedom. Freedom is choice. Freedom is the choice to, to go about your lives, have your property protected, and have your liberty insured. When you have mobs in the street, that is anti-freedom. That's the first point. Yeah. So you want to translate? We're not going to translate. Okay. We, we're, You're good. Time. Okay. Yeah. Um, second of all, um, you need to make certain that you do have the resources for these incubators. And the first thing I do, in fact, I just arranged the, this afternoon to do a roundtable with some independent bankers so we can make certain we get in the next round of PPP money to small businesses like you that missed out the first time. <laughs> And then work with the SBA to make certain those loans are forgiven. And I, I will promise you we'll do that. And I'm already started. Uh, oh, thank you. So, so finally, on COVID, let's understand something. We can't have an overreaction to a disease that has not threatened our hospital capacity to date, that is not going after young people at school or anything else. In 1968, we had a horrible flu. I think that was the Hong Kong flu. Uh, in 1957, we had a horrible flu. In 17 and 18, the Spanish flu, at no time did LBJ or Eisenhower or even Wilson shut down the entire economy. You can't, you can't beat the COVID virus with a second Great Depression. 
So we have to manage this and do it the right way. So protect the vulnerable, protect older folks who are infirm or have an underlying condition, and let the rest of Minnesota go about their business and earn a living. And that's the first thing I uh, The next question is uh, um, Chairman Mai Tonger from the Veterans. You have a question? successful in this country, um, we have uh, been uh, supporting the left for a very long time. The left side, uh, they uh, came and met with us and made many uh, promises that they're going to help us. But uh, years after years, um, some 40 years, um, we have not seen anything at all uh, with them. the promises uh, during election and then uh, once um, they elected and in office, um, no one is reaching out to the Hmong communities as you see here today that the, our stores and shops are shut down, um, um, our places are being, our businesses are being burned down, 
and no one is lifting a finger to help us. So we hope that you will be different because with Shia, it is time that the Hmong community uh, need to start uh, uh, charting a new path with the right. And so we're very happy that she has uh, have decided to do that. To happy that you're here tonight, that we sincerely hope that when you're in office, that you're gonna be a man of action, that you're gonna see what you saw today, that you're going to continue to help the Hmong community so that we too have the freedom that we fought so hard for. Um, with regard to Democrats breaking promises to the Hmong community, Welcome to the club. Uh, they've broken promises to all the refugees, to almost all the immigrants coming, to African Americans, to Hispanics, to any group they have taken for granted for 30 to 40 years. You're not going to be taken for granted anymore. I promise you, when I'm your senator, Hmong people will have a representative in the United States Senate. And for two basic reasons. If you can't get a Tina Smith or a Betty McCollum to utterance a simple, simple denounce, or, or to denounce, I should say, not utter, to denounce Antifa and Marxist groups and communism, they're not going to represent you. That's right. We, you, ask, you ask these Democratic representatives to denounce Antifa, denounce the riots. Denounce the movement for defunding the police. Denounce Marxism and communism, and all you get is crickets. You get nothing, you don't get an answer. If they're not willing to do that, they're not willing to represent all of you. And they're not. Finally, this. And I want to make this really clear. The one people paid a huge price for America on behalf of our efforts to defeat communism in Southeast Asia. You paid that price to come here to be free, but most importantly, you paid that price to be free and then come to America to go from dependence to independence. <laughs> Tina Smith and Betty McCollum want to keep you dependent. They don't want you independent. Right. That has to be right. And uh, we have, I believe, one more question. Uh, from mine, and then the, uh, Mr. Yang, you have the last questions. Hi, right. Jason. Hi. Um, so there's been an e increase of violence towards the Asian community. The most recent one is among elderly women in North Minneapolis, it was just yesterday, beaten and robbed. The elderly in our community seems to be easy targets to criminals for the hate crimes and robberies. But it seems that no one is paying attention to this. No one seems to care about this issue, especially the politicians in office right now. We don't want to hear just a word of sympathy, but action from these lawmakers. What is your plan to do to help these elderly? Let me respond to that with something I heard during the last election cycle. Thoughts and prayers aren't enough. Uh, what you need is action. You're not going to get the kind of protection that your community deserves from politicians who let entire police pranks, uh, pr precincts burn. Yeah. They took the police precinct, and Governor Walls and Jacob Fry and Melvin Carter said, don't worry, go ahead and have it. Yeah. Well, it was only a matter of time before they moved on to the most vulnerable in your community, and unfortunately, that's the elderly Hmong community. And you're right, that is a hate crime, and it needs to be prosecuted. But that means getting back to law and order, getting back to public order, and getting the government to do its fundamental job of public safety. And I, think we need to do that. and I will tell you something else. As a United States Senator, I would fight like hell to withhold federal funds for any city that doesn't protect its citizens, including the monkey. Amen. And finally, Mr. Yang. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much to give me the opportunity to um, uh, speak a uh, uh, couple of words and also I do have a, a couple of questions. Uh, my name is Sean Yang and I'm, I'm the uh, president of Hmong Village Shopping Center here. And, uh, 
we were there long, uh, Long Valley Shopping Center, all of our um, shareholders, uh, we wanted to thank you very, very much for you guys coming to visit us here today. And Long Village don't have any thing to give to everybody, but we do have this room available for all the politicians, for all the nonprofit organization to come to use as, as a free use. If, you know, a meeting or whatever, just to let everybody know about that. And um, my concern and also a question here, that since the week I'm starting, Mount Valley Shopping Center here is not really easy but as far as you walk along the Hmong village, it's not really a very, very nice modern shopping center. And we are all barely meet the state requirement or compliance. You know, it's due to we don't have the money. Nobody support us. And by the time that we open Hmong Village, you really don't have, we don't have those politicians at the city level. And we went to talk to the city, and they said, no, we, we cannot have Hmong Village. There's nothing, nothing we can do. And they refer us to Franklin Bank. They said, okay, go borrow at the Franklin Bank. You know. And we went there, and then I even asked one dollar to half a million dollars. <coughs> And we don't even get a, a dollar. Mm -hmm. I feel so sad off, and then we have to come back to take money from our pocket to complete Hmong village. We have no money coming from the city level or state level or from the bank to help us run away this big building here to become a shopping center. So. I feel so set off, but now, you know, uh, many of the um, politicians, they said, okay, well, we will help, we will help, but we don't get any help, you know. So I would like to see if Jason or Shia, you know, when you guys come to a uh, sit-in position, do you guys see someone like a Hmong village here is an important of the Minnesota citizen and will build the Minnesota and we also consider Minnesota as our home. We will never go back to Laos. Here is our home. So we wanted to build something like Hmong Village here. Not even a very fancy like a Maplewood Mall, but Hmong Village. And we wanted to build something like this to make sure that we uh, can maintain. And the reason we closed so early <coughs> is because it's been four months, three months, we discount 50% rent for our vendors. <coughs> and we don't even get money. And I, and, and I have to be unemployment, collect unemployment. And uh, we cannot afford to pay for security after hour, which is, you know, we cannot afford to pay our bill. So that is why. We think about it, we have to close it early. So we would like to see if any politician party would help us to maintain or to help some business like a, our small windows here or the Hmong village as a whole. And we wanted to see that, to see what we can do to the next level and to make our living in this country, you know, and uh, to become a better life here. So, so I'll go first. Um, I, I pledge to you, uh, Mr. Yang, that when I'm elected, um, I will do everything within my power to make sure that we support your business incubation. Because this, this is where freedom starts. Because without your ability to make a living and make your dream come true, like all of this, like all of the 200 plus businesses here, even the law office, the dental office, 
the clinic office or the cargo. They need to go. And if they're not growing, then America's not growing. And if the mom are not su succeeding in the US, then we become independent. Unfortunately, so far, we've been waiting for the left to lead you. This state is governed by the left. Right. And the mayor's on the left, and the city's council on the left. And they left you alone. That's right. That's right. That's That's right. right. They're going to have to compete now that I'm running. Because they need to earn your vote. And we, you need to hold us accountable. Hold them accountable, hold me and Jason accountable. I can tell you that this is exactly what America needs to support. We want to see an SBA office in here. Woo! Giving out loans. Right? We want to make sure that this place has the best expert coming in here to help you to make sure that all your businesses are growing. We want internship. We want this business partnering with 3M and top, some of the top companies out there so that you learn very quickly on how to become a Walmart, Walmart from a store here. Or if you have a great idea, I always talk about Medtronic, right? Medtronic is one of the largest um, a pharmaceutical company in the, in the world right now. Where did Medtronic start? Here in the US? here in Minnesota and in a garage. We want to take what happened to Medtronic to this place and help every mom business out there to achieve their dream. That is what I promise you. That's exactly what I would deliver. And once I'm elected, you're going to see me out here more often talking to you constantly so I know what your concerns are and so that when I'm in DC, I can give you the resources and advocate for you what you need so that you are not um, doing what you're doing right now where you have absolutely no hope, your, your, your stores, your shops are shutting down, and no one's out here talking to you. I do not believe that, I believe that Betty has come here to talk about deportation, but she has not come here to talk to you. But I'm here, and Jason is here, so here is Jason on what he would do. Thank you. Hey, let me just say this, your problems start to disappear and your recovery starts when Shia gets elected this November. <laughs> you know, I think one of the reasons the Mum community has been giving the Democrats a chance for so long is that once a long, long time ago, there were pro-American, pro-freedom, pro-private property, and anti-communist Democrats. Today, they're called an endangered species. <laughs> there are no Scoop Jacksons. There are no JFKs. There are no Dan Rostenkowskis. There's only the squad. <laughs> Ever since the Refugee Act of 1980, which brought many of you here, thankfully, the Democrats, instead of protecting your newfound freedom, have been chipping away at it, taking away. This is not your father's Democrat party. They come around when they want your vote every election cycle, and then, as you say, they're gone and never to be seen. Mm -hmm. We need to start with PPP. We need to start with SBA. We need to make certain it's a proper environment so this incubation can grow. We need to remove the lockdown restrictions. And I will tell you, once I get sworn in, <laughs> and Angela take a note of this, I promise you right now, when I get sworn in in January, my first trip back home is going to be to Mung Village. Thank you all. Very much. All right, thank everybody for coming. Hey, Jeff, can I say something? Oh, you know, one second, I'm going to call over there. Okay, hold on. One more thing. One more thing. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand. I've been conservative for 30 years. I see this gentleman many, many times. You got, to, you got to sit down and think. There's nothing going to happen. Nothing. They're going to get worse. Seriously, I'm really very involved. But again, we ask them what they're going to do, but we have to give them the chance. You have to go out there, talk to every single man and woman in your neighborhood, talk to them. See, this is they're the hope. That's Otherwise, right. you know what's going to happen. You have to get out there. That's what's going to happen as long as they're not elected. They can't do anything. Seriously, I'm, I'm just frustrated. I see Minneapolis burn like Beirut when I was there, you know? I just literally, I have a son over there, I couldn't call, can't find him. I got my gun, I'm going to go look for him. 
Seriously. Because I thought this happening is happening. I mean, can you imagine that? Like you said, the police station. That's what they want. Thank you so much. They're going to control you. Thank 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 you.